Hi everyone. So this is the Physics 101 English class and uh, we are going to start from the chapter one. And this is based on the units and physical quantities and vectors. Once we consider about the nature of physics, we have to understand a couple of concepts in details. For example, how we can really treat the physics model in the physical system and how can we really treat it as a kind of simplified version? That is what we are going to discuss today. For example, once we consider about the physical system, if we, are, if we want to understand in full detail, that can be a too complicated time to time. But in the physicists, in general, we are considering a simplified version of the model. Considering a physical system, we can give a one example based on the baseball. So this is the A and shows the real baseball in flight. So let's consider what kind of model we are talking about. So this is the ball and spinning on, on the center. And the green line shows the direction of the motion, which is going to be important for the vector topic. And then red line is, shows the gravitational force on ball depends on the altitude. And then the blue arrow shows the air resistance and wind exerts force on the ball. So this is the, the general treatment of the, the complex model of the physics. But in, in our physics problems, especially in the semester, we are going to idealize the model on the, based on a couple of main uh, concepts. One of those is which I mentioned, the direction of the motion, which is we share the, the, the green arrow. And then we treat our baseball as a point object, which you can see in the, in the point. And then red arrow shows the gravitational force on ball, but is constant. And, and it generally, in the real life, it's changing with the altitude and we ignore the air resistance. Considering a physics model, so we have to define some numbers in terms of our measurements. So that's the reason any number that is used to describe a physical event quantitatively is called a physical quantity. So therefore we are going to define some units and some system that are going to, to define my object's uh, behavior in physics. The system of units used by scientists and engineers around the world is commonly used as a metric system. But since 1960, it has been known officially as the International System, and which is abbreviation is SI, and there's a French word, is the Standard International. And now what is this SI unit? So there are three fundamental measurements that we are going to quantify in physics. One of those is length, is a meter, and abbreviation is M. And the second of those is the mass, is a kilogram. It's with abbreviation is a KG. And of course, is the time, which is the, the unit is the second, and abbreviation is S. There are some examples you can see in here, starting from the length to the time, from up to down. This is one of the, one of the examples, a nanometer. It's, this is the abbreviation 1 nm, and 10 to the minus 9 meter and go to down, for example, one kilometer is like a one km, 10 to the three meter. In the same fashion, we can also define some mass definition, which for example, one microgram, this is 10 to the minus nine kilogram. And one final example, which is nanosecond, for example, 10 to the minus nine second. Important things in SI units, we have to consider all the time the length, mass and time in terms of meter, kilogram, and second. On top of those, once we consider about the complicated physics behavior, we have a certain length and dimension in the universe which has to be uh, quantified. Starting from the human being, for example, one of us is one meter, going to the right, for example, smaller micro scale, it's like a blood cell, is 10 to, the, 10 to the minus 5 meter, and radius of an atomic nucleus is around 10 to the minus 14 meter and go beyond. And then above, for example, diameter of Earth, 10 to the 7 meter, and then distance to the Sun, 10 to the 11 meter, and once we go to the beyond, like, for example, limit of the observable universe, 10 to the 26 meters. So the important thing that we have to understand our universe, starting from micro scale to the macro scale, there are certain dimensions and we have to quantify for it. Since we discuss about the physical system, we are going to quantify about what will be the uncertainty and the significant figures on the measurement. The uncertainty indicates the maximum difference between the measured value and the true value. And generally we indicate the accuracy of the measured value, which is going to be discussed as in terms of how my system or measurement close to be true value by writing a number. 
and uncertainty is indicated by the number of meaningful digits in terms of numbers or we can also call it as a significant figures in the measured value. If you look at in the right hand side we can see the examples on the multiplication and division for the significant figures and also addition and subtraction for the significant figures in terms of how we quantify on the numbers. In the first one we show uh, the results have no more significant figures than the factor within the fewest significant figures and uh, for the multiplication or division and for addition and subtraction our terms with the largest uncertainty has to be in the number of significant figures fewest digits to the right of the decimal point which you can indicate as a blue point. Since we discussed about numbers and uncertainty we have to understand about some physical quantities. Physical quantities such as time, temperature, mass or density can be described completely by a single number. On the other hand, some important quantities in physics and then there is a direction associated with these physical quantities and then we cannot only describe by the single number. In terms of definition, a physical quantity is described by a single number we can call it as a scalar quantity uh, and vector quantity is defined as a both magnitude and direction in space. You can see on the right hand side some examples about how we can really define in the vector quantity. Starting from the P1 to P2, our starting position to the ending position, there is a displacement starting from that point to that point and represented by A arrow. And this is my vector. In B, you can see another representation from the point 1 to the point 2 and there are displacements and then straight arrow always. But if there is a line on the in our vectors, basically, it doesn't depend on the path taken, just on this arrow. And then the final example, it shows my total displacement from the round trip on one point. In this case, my vector is zero because there is no, regardless of the path taken and or distance traveled, the point is coming to the same point again. In this part of the lecture, we are going to start the important calculus of the vectors. First, we are going to start how we can add the vectors to together. And then the second case, how we can subtract the, the vectors. In the first case, you can see the sum of the three vectors, which is called is A, B, C. In this case, you can sum up first A and vector B, it, which is going to be a D vector, which is the red arrow. And when you sum up the D and C, you're going to get this, the, the blue arrow, which is vector of R. And then another example, in the same case, you can get this A to here, and the sum up with the B, B and A and C, always the arrow just reached to the end of the vector, you can get this D vector again. And in the second case, the vector difference, we have A minus B vector, or you can represent is equivalent to the adding A plus minus B vector, which is, you can see the B is changed in the direction. In this case, you can see A plus B minus vector B, you can get this, uh, the subtraction or another representation uh, in shown in here. In terms of vector calculus, we can use the trigonometry to understand the, the mathematical concepts in terms, of, uh, in terms of vector quantity. In this case, you can see the, the vector A is the blue line. There is an angle between the x-axis x and y-axis. And x-axis component from the trigonometry information, you can get this ax, a times the cosine theta, and then my y component, which is defined as a times the sin theta component. In this case, you can see ax divided by a just gives you the angle of the cosine with the axis of the x. And then in the same manner, we have a y divided by a give you the sin theta angle. And the, the next thing about we can consider about the, the x, y, z axis, and then we have a unit vectors, which is the directions of the, the positive x, y, z direction, and then the magnitude of 1 and then they are orthogonal to the each other, which means it's like 90 degrees to each other. And then the same manner from this components of vector, I can also use the unit vectors in terms of my vector representation. This is the clear example shows this AX, which is the magnitude of my vector times my unit vector, which is, is a vector quantity. And then the similar example you can see for Y and Z. Okay, in the final part of the, this chapter, we are going to discuss the, the product of vectors. And starting from the first one, we are going to discuss first the scalar products. What is scalar products? We denote the scalar product of two vectors, A dot B. So therefore, time to time, we are using this dot product for this definition. So what is this scalar product in terms of quantity? 
you can start you can just take this two vector vector b and vector a and there is an angle between uh, this this two vector which is called s phi and we place the two vectors tail to tails and get the projection of the b vector on top of a which is going to be a parallel to each other so let's have a look this important equation which is going to define as a scalar product a dot b there are two vectors which is going to be a scalar at the end so the magnitude of a times magnitude of b times the cosine theta phi between a and b so that's the, that's the general definition of the scalar product. Second part of the, the, the product of vectors, we're going to discuss the vector products in, on top of the scalar, ve scalar products. So we denote the vector products in terms of two vectors, a and b, is a cross b. As we defined before, this is also called as a cross product in, on top of the vector product. So what is the cross product? This is, this is another vector, is c, this is going to be a vector, a times b is the magnitude times the, the, the sinus angle phi between these two vectors. So there is a certain rule. So basically one we discuss about the vector product. So the multiplication of two vectors, it again, it turns out to be another vector. So where is this vector? Let's have a look. So we are going to discuss a cross b. So there is a certain rule. So first we placed a and b tail to tail, as you've seen from here. And you point fingers to the right hand along to A. So we just take your hand to the along to A and make to the down finger our fingers to the B. And my first finger is the thumb points to do my next vector A cross B. This is right hand rule. You can also test yourself from the B cross B, which is not the same like A cross B. You can test, for example, B cross A on the direction you're gonna, you're gonna see that it's the other way around you're going to get the another vector. This is called like a B cross A. So this is an important concept that you get another vector after the multiplication and the direction of this vector is very important. 